You're listening to Tub Talk, the podcast for IT business owners with our featured conversation with Richard Tubb and Rick Yates of ZSphere. My name is Jeff Nicholson, and this podcast is all about helping you grow your IT business. In this episode, Richard talks with Rick Yates, Managing Director at ZSphere. ZSphere are a cloud solution provider for MSPs. They're a value-added distributor for IT managed service providers. ZSphere pride themselves on providing a fresh approach to technology sourcing, providing a high-value, human relationship-focused service exclusively for MSPs. This episode was recorded in person when Richard visited Rick at the ZSphere team at their offices in Warrington, England. We join the conversation in progress as Rick shares why ZSphere are experiencing success working with MSPs in the UK. And now, without further ado, here's Richard Tubb talking with Rick Yates. Hey folks, Richard Tubb here, and today I'm joined by, a, well, a fellow Rick, Rick Yates. Uh, now, Rick is the Managing Director of ZSphere, a specialist distributor of cloud-based technology products, specifically for managed service providers. ZSphere have a team of tech-happy, MSP-focused product specialists who live and breathe cloud, tech, cybersecurity, and business productivity. Now, they're a really fast-growing and exciting company, and I thought it'd be fun to sit down with Rick and find out all about Z- ZSphere. Rick, it's really good to spend time with you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fantastic. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, thank you for having me on, and thanks for that uh, fantastic introduction. <laughs> no, my <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> So, firstly, I think you've had a pretty interesting journey to becoming the managing director of ZSphere, one that includes quite a few twists and turns. So before we talk about ZSphere specifically, perhaps tell us how you arrived at where you are today. Oh, crikey, yeah, it really has. It does feel like it's been a long old road, but actually it's only really been kind of, uh, you know, the last... Two or three years that have been the most exciting. I mean, we set up ZSphere in November 2015, and um, in that time, you know, we've we've, we've supported um, just around 700 MSPs. But um, personally, I was never, uh, you know, I'm not actually a techie. I, I'm more of a, a sales and marketing person. But a few years back, I was um, uh, really, really excited to, to start my own company, and I was actually developing a software product. Um, uh, I worked to start my own business and um, I knew that I needed funding and I'd already been and, and got a, a, a business startup loan from the government, 10 grand, which I'd chucked at a software developer and he'd made this kind of basic product for me, which was actually a, uh, like a cloud, it was meant to be a cloud sourcing information type product for, for lawyers. And, um, you know, it was a good idea and, um, you know, I was, I was really passionate about it and I knew that I needed some extra cash if I was going to make this business happen. So, um, I spent a year trying to get into one of these business angel networks, you know, where a bit like Dragon's Den where you pitch for some, for some investment. And uh, I remember being really confident on the day and I turned up with about 15 business plans and, um, you know, my, my pitch that I'd practiced for hours and hours, but it was only five minutes long. And I remember when I was doing my pitch, there was a bloke at the back who'd fallen asleep and, uh, you know, <laughs> he, and when you, I've never ever had anyone fall, fall asleep while I've been doing a presentation before, but I knew at that moment that, oh, hang on a minute, this, I don't know if this one's going to fly. And um, uh, I went and stood behind my table and, and, and no one was going to come and talk to me. And um, I'd been there about half an hour and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to, um, I'm going to nip to the loo and when I come back, I'm going to pack up my stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to go. And I think this is the end of the road for, for, um, for this project. So off I went and, and I was just coming out of the bathroom and um, there was this bloke walking down the corridor who I recognized out of the audience. Not the guy who was asleep, by the way, but um, <laughs> somebody else. And I thought, you know what? I've not got anything to lose. I'm just going to kind of like stop this guy and ask him some advice uh, because I don't really know where to go from here. So I stopped him and I said, oh, um, you know, how, how was your day being? Did you see anything that you liked? And uh, he said, oh, yeah, you know, actually, I really like your idea, but I, I, I just don't think I could you know, sell that kind of company for like a few million quid in a few years. And, you know, we got chatting and uh, we ended up exchanging details. And um, that was actually, that, that person was actually a guy called Divesh Lakhani, who um, he actually, he, he was uh, been in software distribution for many, many years and uh, had done a really successful job of it. And he actually ended up investing in my idea. And, um, uh, you know, um, so he sent, us some, he sent us this money and he became partner 
I quit my job, me and my girlfriend, we moved up from Bristol to, to Manchester and got cracking. And, you know, it, 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 around the same time, there was, um, I'm, you know, I'm sure you'll be aware that IBM have got this supercomputer called Watson, which is like the artificial intelligence computer that they've got, which is absolutely amazing. And they'd given access to this computer to um, a group of law students from Stanford University. And um, they basically created the same product that I'd made, but a million times more sophisticated because what they were doing was they were allowing legal specialists to actually ask this computer questions about certain legal inquiries they had and stuff like that. And um, it was just able to provide the information immediately. And so as soon as I saw that, I thought, not only am I struggling to get users on this platform, but there's this super, super amazing solution that's, that's just... Uh, you know, going to appear on the market. And, um, you know, I sat down with Divesh and said, listen, Divesh, you know, there's some red flags over here. I think um, probably better give you your money back before I end up spending the rest of it. And um, he said, well, you know, we knew that this could happen. And, um, you know, it does, it's all right. Uh, by the way, you know, um, I'm thinking about, you know, getting back into software distribution. Would you be interested in coming and, and getting into so this software distribution business with me and so um that's what we did and we set up a software distribution company together and he sat there for two months straight from eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night training me on how to do sales and um uh you know gave me all of his uh, uh wisdom from from his decades of uh, servitude in the software distribution industry so um so that was a fantastic opportunity for me and, and one that I relished. And, uh, you know, we worked together for a couple of years and then it became really, really apparent to us that, you know, what managed service providers are really the future of the IT industry uh, when it comes to, um, you know, finding a software product and then the, the whole element of having a service wrap around it. You know, we were seeing exponential growth in the number of customers that we were getting that were actually MSPs and, um I just decided, you know, I said, really, we really need to do something um, to help this market. There isn't any anybody who we can see in this space that's really, really just focused on MSPs and nothing else. You know, there isn't anybody out there that's curating um, tools uh, for technical directors at MSPs, a place where they can go, uh, they can really, really trust. This is just a pure kind of like MSP focused solutions provider. And so we set up ZSphere with, with that intention and, um, you know, that was a couple of, just over a couple of years ago now. And literally since then, it's just been, you know, everything's been going upwards and to the right on the charts. And uh, it's been uh, 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 one hell of a ride. So, yeah, Divesh and I are still working together and, um, you know, uh, it's, it's all going really, really well. And we've, we've kind of got a, a point to prove that, um, you know, MSP is the way forward for IT services and for software consumption. And, um, you know, there's a way that um, techies like to buy and MSPs like to buy. Um, and that's and that's through, you know, being helped, uh, being able to just find a product when they need it, having a team that knows what they're talking about. And um, that's what we're aiming to do. So yeah. that's our story in a nutshell, really. Um, so I, there you go. I, I love it. I think it's a, a fantastic story. And I, I think, you know, people listening are going to be intrigued to hear about this because we, I speak to so many people who are wildly successful on this podcast. And I've no doubt, Rick, you're going to be included in oh, that group as so. well. <laughs> um, <but laughs> the point uh, I think is, though, that not too many t people talk about, you know, the missteps that they've taken. Um, so it's really interesting to see, you know, you didn't fancy going up against IBM uh, quite se sensibly with your situation there, but it actually resulted in, you know, a new opportunity for you. So before we get on to talking about ZSphere in depth, I really do want to talk about the business some more. Tell me some more about your relationship with Divesh. Uh, how important has it been to you, not just professionally, but personally? What do you get out of that relationship? Oh, gosh. I mean, it's absolutely invaluable. And, you know, I mean... I Every now and again, I get the opportunity to chat with people that are considering starting their own businesses. And, you know, this isn't the first company that I've set up. You know, this is like the eighth company that I set up. And, you know, the, the, the big difference about uh, this company and all the other companies that I've tried to set up were that previously I was doing it on my own or I was doing it with someone that, you know, they were kind of like coming along for the ride or they weren't ready. And the, the whole point of having someone like Divish is that there's someone there who is a mentor, who, who has got some, um, ex, who's got the right kind of experience, the right advice, not just professionally, but, you know, just, just sometimes as a business leader, 
you just need to be able to pick up a phone to someone and bounce an idea off them and say, what do you think about this? And, and they, can, they can give you the same answer that you would have come up with anyway. But just having that reassurance, um, you know, has been massively, massively important to me. And I, I, I absolutely am under no illusion that if, if I hadn't have had the opportunity um, provided to me by, some, by, by someone like Divesh, um, there's no way I would have done this. You know, there's no way that I would have probably even known about software distribution or how to do it or, you know, how it works. And what's been really, really nice is that Divesh has got kind of like 20 or 30 years of experience in software distribution. I mean, he grew a business to become, you know, from just a, a basic reseller to being uh, Europe's largest distributor for Symantec, you know. Um, and there's so much experience there and I can learn his lessons, you know, like it, there's, there's, there's encounters that he's had and things that he's experienced where, you know, I don't need to make the mistakes that he made because he's made them and he can tell me what they were. Um, and at the same time, I'm coming in from uh, somewhere else, you know, I'm, I'm from out of um, industry, really, you know, I'm from, a, I'm from a marketing background and I can kind of like bring best of class practices from, you know, from, from other industries and stuff that works here, things like our inbound sales and marketing philosophy, um, is a little bit different to what you would see from a lot of other distributors, you know. So it's um, it's been a really really nice partnership actually, and you know, surprisingly, you know, Divesh says um, that he learns as much from me as, as as I learn from him. But you know, I, I don't know whether he's just been polite or not. So um, uh, no, it's, I, I, I think in, it, and forgive me for interrupting. In my experience with the mentor the mentee relationship, um, I would say that the best relationships are when we're both. Both people learn from it. So I would absolutely um, sort of concur with what yeah. 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 I don't think he's just been kind. <laughs> no, no. I mean, and, you know, it's it's um, it's, it's just a case of um, having someone that you can trust and that someone that's willing to take a punt on you. And, you know, and I, I always say pe these pe like friends of mine or colleagues or whatever that come to me now and say, I'm thinking about starting up a business. Uh, and I just say, let me give you one piece of advice, if that's all right. You know, don't try and do it on your own. Whatever you think you're capable of, please, I beg you, don't do it on your own because um, you know, it, 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 two heads are better than one. You know, mm. and, and um, it's just it, running a business is a really, really stressful thing to do. Sometimes it's also my dream job, but it's incredibly stressful. If 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 you if you know, it can very easily become incredibly stressful as I'm sure you're aware, and as I'm sure lots of the listeners are aware. And um, yeah, it's just nice to have that kind of, that place to go, uh, or that, that voice on the end of the phone when, when you need it. Absolutely. You know, I've always had mentors, coaches, uh, and still to this day have. And I think when people ask me why I work, uh, why I have mentors, why I have coaches, it's that other voice in the room. It's the sanity check. It's the, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but I want to speak to somebody else, uh, you know, and just make sure I'm absolutely, uh, I'm not insane with this. I'm going in the right direction. So I totally, totally. Get, it. I totally mm. get it. Yeah. So, so let's move on to Z Sphere then. Uh, I always describe you as a boutique distributor <laughs> to others. Yeah. I don't think that's really doing you justice. So for those who aren't familiar with Z Sphere, uh, how would you describe yourself? What do you do? Who do you help? We describe ourselves as the cloud solutions provider for MSPs. So we, I guess it's, you know what, it's pretty fair for you to call us boutique. You know, when you come and look at us, um, we look a bit more like kind of like a sales and marketing kooky marketing agency than a, than a distributor. You know, it, we we're certainly don't have that kind of like rows of desks with people just smashing quotes out all day. What we're really, really aiming for is to focus explicitly on a very particular type of buyer, you know, um, a very specific person. And that person is the person that is running a managed service provider business. And typically that person is a technical director or someone with uh, a, a huge amount of technical experience. And so what that individual wants is to be able to um, pay the right amount of scrutiny to the products that they're going to be using. You know, they want to have a relationship with, the, with their suppliers that is meaningful, um, one that they, that they can trust. And they want to, you know, they don't just want a sales conversation. They want to be able to go and access content online or anywhere else um, on somewhere like Spiceworks or on a, on, a, on a website anywhere and actually make their own decisions around, you know, why do I actually want to purchase this product? And, and we know for a fact that most of our customers will make, you know, 70% of their buying decisions 
before they even pick up the phone to us. You know, they'll have been on uh, product websites, they'll have been on Spiceworks and, and ask for product recommendations and things like that. And so, you know, it's about understanding what managed service providers want and need. And um, we're just doing our best here to try and, I like to use the word curate because we, we really try and find curate products that are relevant for MSPs. Everything that is on our menu is uh, suitable for MSPs. And um, indeed, if we have vendors that, you know, want to get into the MSP industry, but they're not ready, they, they, we don't take them on. You know, and we get approached by loads of vendors that want to do that. You know, the, 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 the um, MSP industry is kind of like, so romantic, such a romantic place for, 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 for software vendors, you know, oh, we want to get into MSP, you know, that'd be brilliant. But, uh, and, 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 and we speak to them and they don't have, you know, centrally managed consoles or monthly billing or multi-tiered facilities and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, so we're also kind of trying to like be the guardians of the, um, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the software industry for MSPs as well. So, yeah, we, you know, our ambition is to, is to end up, um, in, a, in a place where if, you, if you're working in an MSP or if you're looking after a network, um, you know that you can come to us and you can, you, you can trust that we're the guys that MSP can come to. Um, and, um, you know, that's it. You know, that's kind of like the elevator pitch, really. Um, yeah, so. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about managed services a little bit. So Zedsphere, uh, an MSP managed service provider focused uh, value-added distributor. Mm. How would you define... A managed service provider. Oh wow! I mean, what a kind of worms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think just the, between you and I. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. The thing that we've learned is that with MSP, um, it's very, very difficult. When we look at, if we were to look at our list, a list of all of our customers, it's very, very difficult to find two MSPs that are exactly alike. Yeah. And you know, we do actually kind of categorise to an extent the MSP uh, groups um, almost in, in, in kind of like a very very basic way. You've got your hardcore group of managed service providers that might have been in business for fifteen or twenty years. They've always been a managed service provider. They've always charged uh, a monthly fee for offering a service uh, of support. You know, with software, hardware, you name it. And then you've got your kind of um, break fix MSPs that are kind of coming out of that break fix environment and getting into cloud software as a service type offerings. And then there's this massive big batch of resellers, software resellers, hardware software resellers that, you know, they've twigged onto the fact that MSP is where it's at and it's where it's going to be for the foreseeable future. And um, they want to bolt on service wraparounds to, to their uh, offerings. And so for us as a distributor, there are different things that we can offer each different group, you know, um, in terms of our level of expertise and the advice and, you know, what products we feel are right for them and things like that. So it's really, really um, such a mixed bag. Uh, and there's no definitive answer is the thing that we've found, you yeah. know. Yeah. And vendors often come to us and say, you know, what are your MSPs doing? Like, what, what, what system, how do they work? What systems do they use? And, and we, there is, we just say, listen, we can't actually give you the answer to that because it's, it's, it's so diverse. Uh, it's really, really difficult for us to tell. But we, can, we have a way, we have a feeling around we, how we think it's a good way to do MSP. Um, you know, we think that you should have a very kind of, um, uh, you know, a, a, a good um, identifiable product set yeah. You know, good, clean billing uh, um, and financing options. Um, be able to report on the service that you've delivered. Um, make your value known. Um, but that said, we're not a managed service provider. So, yeah. you know, we wouldn't want to, um, you know, I mean, the people that it, we would never want to go and tell people how to suck eggs. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to dictate to people oh, what well, a managed you know, service provider is. Yeah. What we're really, really good at is understanding what products do and, and introducing them to customers and yeah. introducing them to MSPs and trying to let them know what value they might add, you know. Um, there's so many different MSP models out there that, um, and a lot of them work for, for a lot of people, yeah. you know. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, it's really, a really, really interesting industry to be in. And um, a massively exciting industry as well when you look at the amount of growth. And um, it's, it, it, it might be useful insight or interesting insight for MSPs because, you know, when we sign up customers, what we do is we sell a license for something like Ninja RMM, and you know they'll say I'll say right I'm going to take I'm going to sign up and start with 200 seats of, of of Ninja. And most of the time, that managed service provider when we look when we look back at their account in a year's time, for example, and we're, we're doing some kind of review, is they will usually have grown at least 100. Mm. You know, and there aren't many in terms of seats. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, I mean, if you think about it, on the ground, adding 200 seats to an MSP, you know, that might be one or two guys offering MSP services in, as part of a small company, you know, they've doubled their offering, they've doubled their customer base. Um, that's massive, more than 100% growth in a year. And that's really, really consistent across the MSP um, customer base that we have, yeah. you know. Um, what do you attribute to, are you attracting those type of MSPs that are hungry for that type of growth? Are you offering products, a combination of these things? Why do you think that you end up working with those types of MSPs that are growing so quickly? It's just, it's just because I think they, they're looking for, for products that are gonna make their businesses efficient. Um, that, their, that their customers are going to understand add value, and um, you know they come and uh, know that they can pay a, a certain monthly amount for it, and then they can offer out a service at a certain monthly amount and make a certain amount of money. And um, they just tend to be pretty savvy people that you know can say to potential customers, "Ah, oh, well, you know, we can do this for you and help you out with it." And it's a model that works. It's just a model that works, and that means that you know they can start with a uh, hundred seats in January of one year, and by the time you get to January of the following year, it's really, really you know common for us to see MSPs that have grown more than one hundred percent. And that was what astounded me when I looked at the MSP world and the, and the small number of MSPs that we were working with at the time. You know, for a company to see 100% growth year on year, I mean, it's 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 crazy. It's like bordering on ridiculous. You know, um, so um, it's hard to it's hard to say what the secret sauce is, mm. but I think it, it's just a model. And when you've got an MSP with a, with a group of people that are well engaged, they, they understand how to work with customers, they use some techniques, the kind of techniques that you advise on in your blogs and things like that. You know, um, the formula is there for success. Yeah. Let's rewind a little bit and talk about the product set then. So 2015, um, Zsphere started out. You've almost come from that almost cybersecurity background. Yeah. Um, take us from 2015 cybersecurity to where you are now and the number of products that you've, uh, vendor products that you're looking after at Zsphere. Sure, yeah. Well, we've got six core products at the minute uh, and we are planning on expanding that. So we started out with a cybersecurity focus and that was really kind of like, you know, um, not in a cap back to our cybersecurity days because the legacy of, you know, the work that Divesh did in the past and, and um, you know, when we set up Distology uh, was really very cybersecurity focused and it still is uh, because that's a, a massively important market to sell into. So we started with cybersecurity and um, very quickly realized that, you know, um, the beating heart of MSP is um, tools like remote monitoring and management, PSA, that kind of thing. So it was very, very important for us to focus on building a partnership with a vendor that would, would that would allow us to take an excellent product into the MSP market. And we were just incredibly fortunate to be able to um, engage with Ninja RMM mm -hmm. uh, around this time last year, a bit earlier than that. And uh, Ninja was still relatively new, but it had this amazing success in the US. You know, it was just, a, it was just three guys that came out of Dell and Packet, Packet Trap and Anchor that came together and they built an RMM and um, I think by the time that we met them, they'd already sold into about a thousand MSPs in America, wow. just themselves, you know, using a small team of salespeople in the, in the United States. And looking at the product, um, we were so excited by it because it was just so easy to use, um, you know, and, and it, it was more to do with the principles behind Ninja. You know, they're really, really going for this ecosystem play where you can take vendors that MSPs love Things like TeamViewer, WebRoot, um, you know, vendors that um, they can plug in and integrate seamlessly and be part of a, of a platform. And you can kind of pick and mix what you want. You know, you don't have to have, you know, uh, the Ninja AV. You don't have to have the Ninja PSA. You can pick the vendors that you want and just plug it in there. And um, the way that they were doing it was all focused on ease, not based on old legacy technologies um, and super easy onboarding, uh, training, um, flexible approach to billing and things like that. So we just, we saw it and we're like, we, we need to partner with Ninja. Th yeah. That's the future for us. Um, and we managed to establish a relationship with them. And um, we're a year in, just over a year in now with Ninja and they are doing so, so well. Uh, it's absolutely flying off the shelves in the UK with, you know, with us, which is fantastic. We've got a dedicated Ninja sales team now. Uh, so that's been the core element is, 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 is building that RMM focus, allowing MSPs to plug in cybersecurity, um, uh, remote connect, 
the things that they need. Yeah. Um, and I should say, um, for anybody who's not seen Ninja RMM as a product, uh, you and I uh, did a demo of it. Uh, we've got yeah. that as a separate video, so I'd encourage you to go and take a yeah. look at that. I was really impressed by the product. It's really easy for use, even for an old man like me. <laughs> so if I can pick it up, I think there's uh, lots of uh, MSPs can pick it up. Well, you know, I'm not a technical person, you know, uh, and um, I, I, I was able to pick it up pretty quickly and I can demo it myself and, and, and things like that. So and, and sorry to interrupt that, but I want to emphasize how important that is. So one of the big uh, roadblocks for, for MSPs, for IT companies adopting the MSP model is the amount of time it takes to actually bring a tool on board and to get into that mm. mindset of doing things. So anything where you can get a, almost an off the shelf product and do 80, 90% of the things that an MSP needs to do yeah. just like that, Fantastic, happy days. Yeah. You know, um, I wish there was a product like that around when I was starting well, in the industry. industries. So. Yeah. To be honest with you, the thing that's most popular that we're having the most success with is is we sell Ninja as part of a bundle. So right. you buy the Ninja RMM platform, um, and it comes with WebRoot endpoint protection, which is this fantastic, you know, next generation endpoint protection tool um, that is having massive success in the MSP space, um, and um, uh, a TeamViewer license as well. You know, and you know, TeamViewer is obviously one of the world's leading remote connect solutions but both of those solutions are bolted really really deeply into into uh, ninja it's all managed from the same console right. so when you get that you can pretty much take that offering from for one monthly fee from us and um, you can start offering MSP services, really. And uh, you know, we get you, you know it's, it, whether it's a, a surprise or not, I don't know. But we still get a lot of people that are saying, "Oh, I'm just starting out in MSP. I need a nin we call it a nin you know a Ninja starter pack where they you know they, they can have up to fifty seats of Ninja TeamView and WebRoot, and they can just crack on, yeah. you know." Um, so and something like Ninja, it, it's the kind of thing that you can just onboard in less than an hour, um, and um, people don't tend to have any. Um, you know issues with it at all so you've got your small kind of msps that are just starting out with 50 seats that can just crack on with it but then we've got some of your larger msps we've got a customer that, that that's three three thousand three thousand seats plus right. and they did a transition over to ninja and it and it was within a week that you know they, they'd managed that whole transition schedule uh from a competitive platform and know? what was what was the reasoning why did they move from what i'm going to assume is an established um yeah. platform across to this this punk startup. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, the the objection that we get the most about the the big legacy kind of RMMs is that they're a little bit frustrated about it being clunky, mm -hmm. uh, bit of a big old beast, bit of a dinosaur. Sometimes they find things like you know there've been new features that are added on that they're getting billed for, but they never asked for or needed. Yeah. You know, so the price has just gone up, and so well, why is the price going up? Oh, we've added in this feature. You know, well, don't really need it. Um, and things like you know outsourcing their customer support to India and stuff like that, and just been making it more difficult for MSPs to kind of get on with stuff. Mm. Um, you know, so it, it's it's kind of like um, you know rocking up with like a, a big old Volvo that you've had for for, for twenty five years. It's been strong, reliable. You know, kind of like tootling along, and then you know you rock up with like a, a sports roadster you know that, that you know like a smart car roadster or something like that that's you know super efficient fast kind of funky bit sexy as well you know um and and does everything a lot quicker and more efficiently and and, and with ninja that's what we're finding and it's so good to be able to be part of a company where you've got a product and you don't get objections on technology you know the the conversations that we're having is oh my god yeah ninja's wicked um you know sometimes a question about like what's the reporting functionality or you know what's coming on the roadmap for the next quarter and as a software company that's taken a lean approach to launching a product of course there are things that are on the roadmap for the future as with any product really um, but ninja seems to be ticking boxes and we don't get anybody kind of having massive objections on the technology sure. you know it, it's it's a lot of the time it's down to things like oh well you know i need to pay 10 pence a month or you know um you know, oh, it, we're just not in the buying cycle right now. It's just not the right time. Things like that. So, when you're in a position where you, you, you're you're part of a sales and marketing team that can do that, it's just so great because you don't have to worry about, you know, no, you don't have to worry about the fact that you've got a, a rubbish product because yeah. you know you've got a great one. So, and that's so helpful because you know when you've got a product specialist out there on, on, in the sales team, they can actually talk with passion about Ninja 
and 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 and, and Webroot and TeamViewer, you know, they can actually say with full knowledge that these are the best products on the market. Yeah, I was you know, over hearing one of uh, Warren's calls a little bit earlier on when right. he was talking. So um, we're to uh, to an MSP. We're, I'm going to guess based on the phone call that Ninja was um, that was their first RMN product that they'd really come across. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to do that. You know. Um, and that's, I think that's key for us. And that's why we're so selective about the products that, we'll, that, we, that we take on as well. Yeah. You know, we're more, more than willing to wait a year, two years for the right, for the right vendor. You know, we've got a list of the products that we want, mm -hmm. uh, the type of product categories that we want. But um, you know, if, the, if the right vendor isn't there, we won't, we won't, we won't partner. You know, it's as simple as that. So, um, so let's rewind a little bit. So I've mentioned the phrase distributor. We've got yeah. an industry full of acronyms. We've got RMM, remote monitoring, maintenance. We've got PSA, professional services automation. When we talk about distributors, it might not be clear to everybody what a distributor is. So give yeah. me your definition of who ZSphere are and what a distributor is in both the traditional sense and what you're doing with ZSphere Sure, now. sure. Okay. There's a traditional uh, style of of distribution and so a distributor is someone who represents a vendor who who sells to uh, resellers or managed service providers distributors don't sell to end users you know so they're they're a supply route or procurement route for uh, people that are selling software or hardware or, or you know whatever and um, there's been this traditional model of distribution where um, you know, uh, a distributor will almost kind of like just kind of be responsible for taking the uh, run rate of a vendor. So a vendor will be responsible for lead generation, demand generation, things like that, and they'll get leads and they'll chuck the leads out to distributors um, and say, right, you know, fulfill these orders and things like that. And and, and, and the distributor will have their own uh, supply network, all of their own resellers that will try and push products into, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the traditional distributor route. And, and really very often, the distributor model uh, was a case of a, was a case of um, a, a, a reseller going to a distributor and saying, "Oh, my customer has asked my customer has asked me for this product. Please, can you provide me with a quote for it?" And they'll provide a quote for a, a full one-year subscription, and it'll be paid all up front when the customer orders. And it's kind of as simple as that. That's the traditional distribution model for hardware and for software. Almost box shifting. Box shifting, yeah. yeah. You know, whatever Almost you want to call them. the middleman there. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever you want to call them. You know, they've got all sorts of different names. Broadliners, box shifters, tin shifters, you know, quote monkeys, you know, you, quote monkeys. Quote, yeah, yeah, you That's name it. Kind, but I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, so um, it's. Um, you know, so that's really the traditional model of distribution. I think where we sit is really quite different from that because whilst we do represent vendors, we uh, represent a very niche um, specific set of vendors that are really focused on on MSP, and we have some very specific criteria. And our criteria is that it's got to be cloud based. There's got to be um, the ability for it, for the software to be multi tenanted, multi tiered. Um, it must be uh, built flexibly. So MSPs must be able to sign up and say pay monthly, uh, or you know, um, you know, run uh, like an over usage program. You know, if they need more of the software, yeah. they don't just have to keep coming and placing orders with us. It's got to be easy, and that's kind of the criteria for us. But at the same time, um, you know, we look out for products that um, are going to be of interest. You know, specific interest. We don't just sign up loads of vendors and, and say right, we're distributing these these yeah. tools. You know, so. Um, and you know, you used the term last night when we went out, went out for dinner. You said, "Oh, you're a boutique distributor." And whilst um, that's not a term that I've uh, used that much, I can kind of see actually, yeah, we kind of are a boutique distributor because we've got actually for for, for what we do, we've got a relatively small team here of very dedicated product specialists, and um, you know, we kind of. Um, have a, quite a close relationship with the MSPs that we work with. So most of the time, the big, the, the big difference that you've got to realize about, about working with MSPs is that most of the time is you're selling to and working with people of like a technical director type level, yeah. you know. And MSPs are emotional about the products that they work with. You know, they want to know that it works and that they like the the, the ethos behind it and things like that. And they've got to have trust um, in the company that, the, that they're buying from as well, you know. So for us, we really, really clearly understand that. And, you know, we're not going to try and just tin shift software to MSPs. It's about um, letting them know that this is 
almost kind of like these are almost like products that we've kind of like curated and pulled together for them and um you know we don't just do demos we offer uh one-to-one -one intro product sessions with vent with founders of the vendors you know yeah. if you want a, a demo a ninja a ninja demo with us you don't get a ninja demo you get a one-to-one -one session with a ninja founder mm. you know it's like we want that kind of quality and um um you know for people to kind of review the products and and, and get the get what they need from us so it's kind of like that almost like bespoke kind of um kind of uh, high quality feel uh, that people can come and they know that they can trust us. Mm. Um, but it's also giving people that opportunity to know that they can come to us and they don't just have to buy one product. You know, they can. We, they know that they can get, you know, endpoint protection, remote monitoring management, VoIP, uh, next gen firewall, and they can get it all in one monthly bill from Zsphere. And if there's ever a problem, they can ring up and speak to Lizzie you know, or you know, or somebody else in our team, and it'll be resolved immediately. Yeah. You know, um, and um, it's an inter it's interesting approach because I've heard it referred to in the MSP market with end users as one throat to choke. Yeah, one throat uh, to choke. Uh, yeah. Course. So MSPs, yeah. of course, look after um, all of the the software and the hardware and um, the vendors for their clients and everything. So yeah, it sounds to me as though you're the one throat to choke. It's not well, a pleasant phrase, but it well, do you know what? Works. I think yeah. I think one throat to choke is. I definitely know what you mean, but I think in our in our in in our our, uh, situation I would say maybe one cheek to kiss oh. you know <laughs> is the way to go okay you know I, you know and to be honest with you we get more compliments than complaints actually sure. um, uh, and funnily enough while you've been here I've had an email from um, one of my colleagues because one of our MSP partners wants to give me a ring because he's so happy with Danny out there who's sold him some VoIP recently you know oh, so nice. and yeah. it's nice to get that kind of feedback you know so um, so yeah we're, we're trying to just kind of we're trying to build a company and a brand that people know, oh, it's it's Sphere. we trust them. Those yeah. are the MSP guys. You know, we, we don't really want to be like one of those cloud markets where you can just log in and buy products. Yeah. You know, we want to be the people that you can trust, yeah. you know. Um, so it feels so. as though the phrase distributor or the phrase, uh, the label that I know as distributor probably doesn't really apply to you as much that we might need to, to think up a new label to give to somebody like yourself. Do you know like what? Yourself. It is actually been a bit of a challenge for us. Yeah. Say, are we a distributor? Well, yeah, we're a distributor because we represent you know, vendors, and we have distribution contracts with vendors, yeah. you know, and we sell into the managed service market. But, you know, it's actually a term that we've tried to stay away from. Yeah. You know, we, we, we've come up with all sorts of kind of like things, you know, like I think, our, what does our website say? A fresh approach, a, a fresh approach to technology sourcing. You yeah. know, so it's, you know. Yeah, you a might be a value. sourcing partner. Yeah, a sourcing so, partner could be yeah, a good way yeah, to think about yeah. it, you know. With well, a, have, a, have a think out there. If anybody can... Uh, Give Rick an idea of what Zsphere should be known as, yeah. as opposed to a distributor. That might yeah, be forward. That would be good. So it's um, you know, but at the same time, we have to recognise we're a distributor. Yeah. That's the field that we work in, um, and um, uh, we're just we're just trying to do it a little bit differently. I think you know, yeah. So we've talked about UK managed service providers, but I get the feeling that your scope is not just UK wide. We've talked about Computer Kate, who are based out of. Amsterdam, I think it is. Yeah, Holland. that's right. Yeah, yeah. What about MSPs? What about clients? Are you looking to go beyond the UK? Have you got any clients outside of the UK at the moment? Sure. Yeah, actually, we've just started in the last few months uh, representing Ninja in EMEA. Okay. So we are working with um, MSPs, um, you know, uh, in Europe, uh, quite a few in Scandinavia, Germany. Um, uh, you know that ten, those tend to be the the, the the bigger markets really for MSP. Mm. You know the Scandinavian countries in Germany in particular are the, are the, are the, are the, are the, are the big ones. So yeah, our ambition is to try and kind of continue that. You know uh, as far as our um, distribution agreements will allow us. You know because a lot of vendors they have uh, distributors in in various countries, but we've got a, a history of distribution in Europe and we know the cultural challenges and, 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 and differences that you know you get from country to country. So again, going back to what I was talking about earlier on about, you know, being trained by Divesh, you know, I got really, you know, the training from the best and we were able to um, you know, sell um in, in uh software into um you know Europe and Africa as well. So uh that really has added to our breadth. We're quite confident in being able to do that here and having some success with it. So for us, the UK market is, you know, uh, the key priority yeah. for us at the moment uh, to keep growing up that, uh, that customer base out. But yeah, our span into Europe will uh, continue, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah. What about 2018, the year coming up? I can tell, yeah. already tell you're excited about it. Oh. What's on the horizon without giving too much detail? So you mentioned that you're having conversations with some vendors. We yeah. can sort of guess at that, but we won't do that right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what does 2018 look for? for Z, uh, look like for Zsphere? 
for to be honest with you, 2018 is the year for us. You know, we're so excited about 2018, and for us, the big thing is about being able to offer value to managed service providers in with with, with bundled product sets. You know, we think that. Um, Platform purchasing is the way forward in terms of you know uh, bundling products into you know single platforms and things like that. So we're really really seeing a fantastic response from uh, the bundle cell of Ninja Webroot TeamViewer, um, and you know undoubtedly we're going to be able to um, build extra things into that. Um, you know things like Computercate, potentially even VoIP and things like that. So for us, the that's where 2018 is going to take us is given that power to MSPs and up till now really our um, strategy has been focused around you know selling single products to single customers you know MSPs who want you know some web route or they want some ninja and things like that but you know we're letting them know now that really for you know a very very reasonable price they can bundle everything together save a lot of time and money um, at the same time you know we're going to be on the vendor acquisition trail we've just signed up with untangle which is something that we're massively excited about um, because uh, there's so much potential for uh, next-gen firewall in the UK MSP space um, and we really really want to take a look at um, um, playbook type products you know uh, migration and playbook type products in 2018 so you know what is the service standard that managed service providers should be using if there's something like a server down or if there's a particular query from a customer you know what is the, the process that they should be going through how can they standardize that if they've got six offices you know how does the te- how does the engineer in uh, Aberdeen solve the same problem as the guy in London you know um, so uh, I know that, that we, we know that that's something that MSPs are looking for is to how do you standardize service yeah. um, so that's something that we're really going to be focusing on as well uh, give you a bit of a, maybe a bit of a clue there you know so um, that's it and, and as, as well as um, Zsphere as a business you know we've really kind of been running under the radar a little bit we haven't really been chatting from the rooftops about yeah. what we can offer what we do uh, the kind of value that we can uh, offer to MSPs so we're hoping to really kind of increase the um, amount of communication that we have with customers in 2018 letting them know what our products do uh, offer them some compelling kind of educational content mm-hmm. uh, and just be useful really you know we want to be useful to the MSP sector yeah. um, so um, that's kind of like a key target for us mm. and uh, we'll be trying to use similar um, uh, methods to this you know video content uh, blogs things like that um, so um, that's kind of our goal yeah. for this year coming yeah from a business perspective do you mind asking uh, profitable as a business oh well you know we're so lucky because I mean this is like end of year two yeah um, you know we're profitable no debt in the company Super. Um, you know we've got really really good uh, financial backing um, and we're you know all of the charts are going upwards and to the right which is um, a great thing you know yeah. and um, we're currently um, uh, a team of six uh, office based staff and we're recruiting for two or three more right, right now Yeah. so um, you know by the time we get to the end of next quarter the team could easily be kind of ten people um, so yeah um, it's looking good at the moment you know touch wood fingers and Possibly some, some good lessons learned from your startup career as well. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I mean, I feel like I'm learning lessons every day, to be honest. But yeah, you know, um, you really, really got to take um, those lessons uh, from from being a startup and understanding what works and what doesn't. Yeah. But more valu- the th- I think the thing that's been more valuable to me is learning from the lessons that other people have may have had do you know what i mean the hard knocks that they've had and yeah. um people like um divesh my mentor and you know business partner that i've been talking about to be able to have that kind of knowledge um you know and when when there's something that pops up i can just get on the phone and be like what would you do about this and be like oh well you know we had this situation eight years ago and this is what we did about it and i, I would have never have considered that you know that was the answer but you know um i've got the knowledge and expertise there and then have a phone um as well you know so it's it's it, it's about learning lessons from other people as well i think not just kind of learning your own lessons so um that i think that's been the key probably one of the biggest keys to our success so far uh is you know putting faith in my experience and our experience but other people's experience as well you know yeah so you brought untangle on as a new vendor mm-hmm. what do you rick yates and what does ed look for in a vendor is there a quality to it is it all about the product is it the team Mm. what do you look for when you bring these vendors on board it's a bit of a mix of all of those things to be honest um we i think the first thing for me is relevance 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 is so key because 
Uh, and, and the thing with Untangle was that, um, and the thing with Ninja as well is that, you know, this is specifically a product that is so relevant to MSP that they've taken the time and energy and resource to develop that into the product. You know, there's um, options for billing. There's, um, you can deploy it in a way that's suitable for managed service providers. Uh, they've actually got MSP on their mind. Um, and when you have those conversations with people, um, it's almost like there's immediate chemistry you know, because we're like, oh, we love MSP, we love MSP, and, and um, they're like, oh, you know, well, we're all about MSPs, you know, so so straight away we're having conversations and they can start asking us about the MSP market in the UK and they can kind of see, oh, these guys are talking sense, you know, um, so it's about relevance and, um, you know, technology functionality, you know, we don't want to kind of um, pick up any um, technology products that we're then going to push out there and People like, you know, someone who I've spoken to in the past who's loved products that they've bought from us are then in a situation where they're like, Rick, what is this rubbish that you've put in front of us? You know, like, because that, that then means that they lose faith in, yeah. in, in what we're doing, you know. So we have to have the right quality of products. So that's super, super important. And then it's just about relationship and the level of excitement. You know, we're really, really fortunate here because everybody in the business is just super excited about, you know the vendors that they work with and they represent and like you said just listen to warren sell you know it comes through yeah, yeah you know and uh, the effort that we put in um and so that's really really important for us when we're working with our vendors that they've also got the excitement about what we're doing together and that they're happy to work in a partnership way you know that they can come into the office and we can talk about the work that we're doing and we can work together and that it's a team effort mm -hmm. rather than you know the kind of situation where we're saying well you're a distributor your responsibility is to get business well, yeah, but also, you know, we need to kind of be a, a fully aligned in order to allow us to do that and, yeah. and be working together as a functional team, you know. So it's about the chemistry as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the kind of the tick boxes, really, for us. Um, uh, integrations, obviously, that I've already spoken about is, is massively important as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, but we're, we're really, really lucky because we've got a really nice set of vendors here that... Yeah. Everybody kind of ticks those boxes, you Absolutely. know. Yeah. So, um, so you want to keep that quality up going oh, forward. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and you know, fingers crossed, that's something we can do. Mm. Mm. So let me ask you a question with your MD's hat on. Rick okay. Yates, MD at Zsphere. If you could wave a magic wand, what would be the number one problem within your distribution business that you would like to see eradicated tomorrow? Oh my God. What would be the number one problem? Yeah. In my business that I would like to see eradicated. Wow. What bothers you or what keeps you up of a night? The thing that bothers me the most is that there are loads and loads of MSPs out there that um, we aren't talking to. Okay. You know, um, that that we want to be in a place where almost, we're almost kind of like, we're, we're, we're in a place that's almost like really central to the MSP market where MSPs can come. Um, but you know we can't do that without people knowing about us. Sure. You know, and that and that's uh, really really core to our success. You know, so for me, being able to uh, as a business owner, it's about um, you know getting the message out and communicating with people and building as, as someone who runs a relatively new business. You know, building trust in the brand because mm. the trust is like you know without trust you've got nothing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that that that's the key thing for me, I think. Mm. Uh, and it, there isn't a really a magic wand that you could wave. But if <laughs> Don't worry, one, I'm not about to yeah, give you a magic yeah, wand. Yeah, well, do if I if I had one, I think that's what I would do. I'd be like, you know, I, 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 think, that, I think that would what be you it. Do for them. Yeah, I mean, um, I think in terms of the industry more generally, um, you know. <sighs> I think what I would really like is to see some vendors be more uh, MSP focused, uh, MSP savvy to adopt, you know, to, to kind of keep up with the times yeah. um, for things like, you know, software as a service and the cloud and, and the things that managed service providers are doing. And just a twig on that managed services is, 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 the, is the future and that's where things are headed, have, yeah. have already headed really. Um, you know, so, um, and, 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 and to allow the right level of flexibility you know, to make sure that things don't have to be so difficult for MSPs, that there aren't vendor platforms out there that are big old dinosaurs that takes loads of time and effort to handle and, you know, MSPs are getting ripped off because, you know, there's just so much functionality that they don't need and they're getting billed loads for it. Things like, oh, you've got to sign up for a three-year contract. You know, that kind of thing, that level of inflexibility um, really should not exist in our market anymore. Mm. 
Um, you know, and that comes from just the relationships that vendors have with people and the technology that they produce as well. Um, you know, it's really got to be about ease of use, ease of deployment, um, you know, and, and relationships and stuff. I think probably for the industry, that's what I would ask is yeah. to have that extra flexibility. Yeah, good answer. So you, even in the time that I've known you, you're growing at a rapid rate. Uh, how many people are out there now? How many, how many people within the business? Uh, well, um, we're, we're just about two and a half years old and there's, um, there's eight of us. Uh, we've just done our fourth office move in, in two years, which is absolutely mental. Um, <laughs> and we're recruiting at the moment uh, for, um, uh, for another um, inbound sales and marketing specialist. So, you know, we're looking, for, we're looking for people that are really, really into technology and tech savvy that can have that relationship with MSPs about, you know, what, what products they're using and, and um, the things that they need and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we're growing really, really nicely and we've got um, uh, a big ambition to add, you know, four or five really key vendors in the next quarter, you know, so we're looking at adding... Um, a key um, uh, data backup vendor, a key cyber security vendor, a really good white provision um, uh, supplier, um, connectivity suppliers as well. So, you know, at the moment, um, it feels like we're kind of like on the cusp of, you know, getting this big tranche of really good new vendors onto our website. And, you know, so there's going to be some exciting um, announcements for us in the next kind of quarter uh, to really... Just let MSPs to you know they can visit our site or they can speak to our team and, and you know you're, I'm pretty certain they're going to be looking at one or two things on there and going oh, do you know what that's that's really suited for me um, that would that would that would help my business or I'm currently buying that solution somewhere else but you know I can I can bundle it in with the other services that I'm getting from Zsphere and have one consolidated invoice and you know and have a really good relationship with an account manager so um, so yeah it's, it's there's lots going on. Makes absolute sense. I, I want to talk about managed service providers in just a minute. But before I do, something you said there um, really intrigues me. Uh, you know, the type of person that you bring on board with new hires. So I can see a real correlation between what you do at Zsphere and what managed service providers do and the type of people they want to bring on board. So I think it's going to be interesting for people to understand, get a little peek inside Ricky H's mind here. What do you look for in new hires, what you know, what type of person are you looking for? Charisma. Oh my God, you've got to have charisma. You know, and charisma and attention to detail is all I need. You know, that willingness to try. And do you know what we do? Um, we use a tool called Workable, which is uh, uh, it's, it's a really easy to use tool for recruiting. And it, and and you can you can you can um, put questions on there when someone applies for a job with you. You can get them to answer a question. And um, one of the questions, the, the, one of the questions is, our 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 main customers are man are MSPs. What is an MSP, right? And bearing in mind that we've got loads of content online about MSPs on the front of our website, it's like you know managed service providers. And um, you won't believe the number of people that apply for jobs, and you say, and they say, oh, it's a um, member of Scottish Parliament, <laughs> um, Manchester <laughs> Science Partnerships. Um, you know, there was one the other day that was kind of like um, something totally random, like marketing solutions, uh, packages, you know, it, and, and, you know, it, it's the, the way that we um, recruit is that you've got to come to us on your, on your first encounter with us and you've got to already know what a managed service provider is and you've got to be completely bought into that buyer persona. You've got to look to all of our content and you've got to understand the, the jobs to be done of, a, of an MSP person, of a technical director or an MD, you know, they all have a jobs to be done list. And um, that's the key thing for us. If you can't understand um, what that person's life is like, then you're not the right person for us as a company. It's all about understanding our customers. Um, we can teach, you know, how to manage a sales pipeline and, um, you know, how to uh, provide uh, an MSP with access to the right blog or content and that kind of thing. But um, you've got to have charisma, you know, and um, we're a really, really diverse, um, quite uh, um, charismatic team here. So anybody who's a bit of a shrinking violet, to be honest, they're just going to get eaten alive. <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about just being able to link to, to relate to the customer really. And give them the experience that is unsurpassed, you know, we're always talking about this unsurpassed customer experience that's, that's super, super vital to keep your customers, you know, because people can make buying decisions and they can 
buy from wherever they like. You know, they've got to make a choice to come and, and, and buy from you. So um, that's what that's what we look for. I love it. Yeah. Great answer. Very cool, Rick. So I'm conscious of time. What's next for Z Sphere? Do you have any? You talked about some new products and solutions you might be adding to the lineup. What does that look like? Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so it's a really, really exciting time for Z Sphere at the minute, and um, there's a couple of really important things that we're doing right now. And, and um, the first one is that we're adding this really substantial uh, tranche of vendors into our portfolio within the next kind of two to three months, and we want to be able to be in a position where MSPs can come to us and they know they can get their full cybersecurity offering um, through from um, endpoint protection to firewall and beyond. Um, they can get a really good, solid, trustworthy um, cloud backup uh, provider, um, a fantastic uh, VoIP telephony solution, and um, we're going to be offering connectivity as well. So if you need uh, to supply broadband and, and that kind of stuff, um, you know, that's, that's what we're going to be putting in there as well. And this is all stuff that we're always getting MSPs ringing us up saying, oh, do you do this? Do you do this? And for us, it's been quite frustrating because we've been really focused on building our existing product portfolio and the, 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 the buoyancy behind the products we've already got. You know, you can't just kind of like chuck, you know, 20 products in there all at once. You get a few at a time. But, um, you know, we're at the point now where our portfolio is going to look a lot more meaty than it has done uh, until, uh, you know, in, in quite recently. And... Yeah. The, the kind of other key thing is we've launched this awesome uh, partnership program for MSPs. So it's the, it's the Zsphere MSP Partner Program, and it's completely free of charge. It's just a way for MSPs to tap in uh, to our resources without actually being a customer yet, basically. So we've got uh, several hundred MSP customers that are paying for services, and we talk to like several hundred more, if not more, more than that. But uh, we think you know these guys aren't really getting the benefit of uh, things like the MSP Growth Academy or our resources pages um, or, you know, looking at our blogs of content and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they need to know that they can come and get certain things from us and stuff like that. So the the partner program provides you with um, access to a few different things. So uh, if you sign up as a, a Zsphere partner, you get extended product trials, uh, typically, you know, um, 30 days rather than 15 or 60 days rather than 30. Uh, enhanced partner discount, um, so a bigger discount than you would normally get. We're actually launching a really sexy kind of um, uh, MSP-focused magazine uh, called Zed. And, um, you know, that's going to be a really cool read. It's kind of like GQ meets Wired, something that we're quite proud of. Uh, but that's <laughs> going to have, like, loads of handy, uh, you know, like, relevant advice and content in there. And that's going to have, like, things like interviews with vendor CEOs and uh, busy MSPs and that kind of stuff. Uh, so there's a free subscription to that included. Um, and um, we're going to look at also adding things like, um, you know, um, things like a free subscription to uh, something like HubSpot CRM, but with a, a free half hour um, training package chucked in with our oh, HubSpot cool. CRM specialist here. So, you know, like, you know, you can get Hub, something like that for free anyway, but if you can have someone who's, you know, a specialist in the MSP sector who can talk you through how to set it up and how to use it and stuff like that, you know, and that's kind of just free of charge for MSPs to, you know, to come and get some advice and, and, and stuff. So um, the partner program is something that we're really, really excited about. We're, we're excited to do some really kooky events. You know, um, you know, we're planning on um, hiring out like a barbers for a, for the day, and MSPs can come and get a free haircut and have a beer and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> and you know, so we've got some crazy ideas for quite cool um, MSP focused events. I like um, half of that idea there. I like a beer, but, you know, as somebody who is, shall we say, follically challenged. <laughs> follically uh, challenged. But, um, but, yeah. Well, maybe, a head, maybe a head massage instead, instead yeah, Rick, yeah. something like that. You know. I'm, in for, I'm in for that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if anybody wants to find out more about the, the partner program, where, you know, where can they find you on the interwebs? Um, how can they get in touch? Yeah, so it's, you know, zsphere.com is our website, and the front and centre on there is information about the partner program. You can... Uh, uh, check out our videos and um, stuff on there and just sign up. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel now, so you can go and check out our ZSV YouTube channel. And that's got um, our, our uh, MSP Masters interview series. So um, I do interviews with like uh, managing directors at MSPs of all different shapes and sizes, and they tell us about their trials and tribulations and, and stuff like that. And um, we've also got the MSP Growth Academy. So, um, uh, you know, like it's no kind of – it's no um, – kind of like secret that MSPs are mostly 
techie guys that have, have, have started up in business and um, sales and marketing is something that's always a challenge. And, um, you know, sales and marketing is something that's a challenge for sales companies, never mind just, you know, technical companies. Um, and we sell to MSPs, but we're not an MSP. We're a, we're, a, we're a sales and marketing company. And we just thought it'd be a really good idea to try and share some of our sales and marketing knowledge with managed service providers, um, specifically with their needs in mind. So um, I've been doing this um, uh, series every Thursday on YouTube called the MSP Growth Academy. And I just talk about things like, you know, that are important, things like buyer, how to identify your buyer persona, um, how to think about your sales funnel, um, you know, what kind of strategy to use to kind of like attract and convert customers into leads and stuff like that. So there's some really useful content on there that, you know, I just hope that it might be useful. Um, you know, there's no kind of like sales message around it. It's just hopefully something that MSPs will like uh, and be able to make some use of. So I can see you're a book reader. I'm, I'm sat here and I'm looking at your uh, bookshelf with lots of business books on. Yeah, and this one in that particular... Wasn't, that's an, wasn't an unmitigated <laughs> for... Uh, I can recommend uh, the IT owner's um, IT business, business owner's survival, survival, survival guide, guide. Yeah, which was a fantastic read, by the way, by uh, a chap called Richard Tubb, available in all good... Uh, well, book all bookstores, everywhere yeah. their books are sold. <laughs> so that wasn't the reason for asking about that. But yeah. it, in terms of books, you, you're clearly, you know, um, somebody you... Uh, cares a lot about personal development and becoming a better uh, business leader. Mm. What's the one book that you find yourself recommending or gifting to other people the most? To be honest with you, I really like um, Richard Templer. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy has written um, loads of books. Uh, so what's the rules of, that? The Rules yeah. of People by Richard Templer. Yeah. Okay. So I think he must have written like 15 different books and they're all the rules of... Right. So this one in particular is the rules of people. Uh, but, you know, there's also the rules of work, the rules of life, Got it. the rules of wealth. And, you know, this really, Richard, like, this is like toilet reading. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, like, you know, because every single page is a different chapter. Right. You so know, so it's a short bite size. Yeah, yeah, you can go and, you know, read it and you can literally, you know, read one chapter in, in you know, a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's nice and easy to consume. Uh, but do you know what? He actually talks a lot of sense as well, this guy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that, the Rules of that's People good... by Richard Templer. We'll make sure that goes in the show notes. Yeah, well. excellent. And, um, yeah, we'll have to let him know. Maybe he'll send us some books, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's a collection, you know, a big collection. That, yeah. 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 Mm. Right. Um, thank you for your time today. Just yeah, before no we finish... Um, if people want to get in touch with Z Sphere or you personally, how do they reach out to you? Well, you know, it's pretty easy. You can give us a call. Um, you know, our phone number is 0330 122 2050, or just drop, you know, me an email. My email address is ryates at zsphere.com. Um, and again, we'll make sure that's in the show notes. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. So, you know, we're here all the time. Just get in touch if you need anything. You live, breathe, and do everything MSP. We totally do. Yeah. <laughs> we totally MSP do. <laughs> cool. Rick, thank you for your time today. I've really yeah. enjoyed it and best of luck for 2018. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers. You too. Thanks for listening to Tub Talk, the podcast for IT business owners. You can find the show notes and bonus content for this interview, along with dozens of other interviews with IT business leaders over at www.tubblog.co.uk. If you enjoyed this podcast, then we'd really appreciate you rating and reviewing the show over at iTunes. Every review helps us reach new listeners and helps raise the bar for success in the IT industry. Thanks for listening, and I'll speak with you next episode. Have a great day.